The process of building machine learning models is very different from any other development workflow. In this video, you'll learn about that process. More specifically, you'll learn about deciding whether AI is the right approach for your problem, collecting and preparing your data, training your model, evaluating your model, tuning the hyperparameters, and testing the trained model in the real world. Traditional software is well-suited to solve problems where the solution can be described as a formal set of rules. In contrast, AI shines in solving problems where the solution can be extracted from data. Many of the problems we encounter in our daily life can be efficiently solved with traditional programming. If an engineer can break up the solution of a problem and define it using precise rules, then traditional programming is a great tool to use. But many of the problems we encounter in our day-to-day -day aren't quite as easy to define as a set of rules. Thankfully, for many of those problems, we have access to plenty of real-life data containing useful information, which means that AI can help us find a solution. One good example is translating from one language to another. Writing a set of rules that fully encodes all the parallels between two languages is not easy, but there are many examples of translation online, so AI has been able to do a much better job at translation than previous attempts. So our first step when we're starting a new project should be to analyze the problem and determine which technique is best to solve it. If you're able to obtain plenty of data that contains useful information about your solution, then AI is a promising approach. Once you've decided that AI is the right method for you, you need to collect and prepare your data. For example, you may need to normalize it or convert it to a different form or remove rows that are missing certain fields. Once your data is clean, you need to decide about which aspects of your data or features you're going to use as input to your prediction and which feature you want to predict. For example, if you have medical data, you may decide to use features that describe the patient's medical history as input and a chance of a particular disease as the output feature you want to predict. And finally, you need to split your data into training and test sets. A usual split is 80% for your training data and 20% for test. Next, you need to choose a machine learning algorithm, which you'll learn a lot about in the coming videos. If you're undecided between a few good algorithms, you may want to try them all and see which one performs best. Then you need to train your model using the training set you collected earlier and the algorithm you chose. Training a model may take a while, especially if the model is large. Once the model is trained, you can test it using the test data set that you split earlier. It's important that you test the algorithm with data that it hasn't seen during training to ensure that it generalizes well to new scenarios. Some algorithms contain hyperparameters, which are settings that control key aspects of their inner workings. Choosing good hyperparameters is important because they can make a big difference in your results. If you want to be systematic about your hyperparameter search, you can write code that tries lots of different combinations and helps you discover the best values for your data. Once you get good test results, it's time to see how well your model performs within the context of its intended use. For example, this could involve collecting live data from a sensor and using it to make predictions, or deploying your model to a few users of your application. If it all looks good, then you're ready to release it to production and enjoy its benefits. Make sure you watch the next video or we'll start getting hands-on with machine learning by configuring all the tools we'll use in the rest of the series. I'll see you there.